And we are so excited about our new interactive classroom, our uh, Bitmoji classroom. I am Heather Prenovo. I am the Bitmoji on the left. I am a speech language pathologist and uh, AAC consultant for supporting Saltillo products in Minnesota. And my name is Brittany Tony. I am the Bitmoji on the right. And I am a PRC Saltillo consultant I support all product lines in Indiana and parts of Indiana, parts of Kentucky, and then I support Saltillo products in um, Southwest Ohio. So welcome. This is our Bitmoji, or Bitmoji Google Classroom. I don't know what you want to call it. Right. <laughs> um, All the <way> above. <laughs> floating around these days. Um, mm -hmm. As you will see, there are shelves in our classroom, so you can, um, this is an interactive classroom where you can click on the different icons within the classroom and those will take you to, if we've already done the training, it'll be recorded and it'll take you to those recorded webinars. We also have two low tech boards on the wall, which will take you to low tech board options and just keep clicking around. There's also a find your consultant link through that computer where you can find your consultant. And if you want to learn more about PRC Saltillo products. So we want to welcome you. Um, we know AAC is really a journey. We start, you know, with those baby steps and it doesn't happen overnight and we're all at different places within our journey. And that's why Brittany and I uh, developed the Stepping Stone series is we wanted to help with some of those first steps. And now this year we are moving into kind of those next steps. Um, so we're going to keep expanding. We're going to keep adding on. So hopefully these are taking you just a little bit farther. Um, with the strategies and the things we're going to talk about and we want to join you on that journey. Okay, so the first resource that we have is a resource. This is called our organizational tool. It's another stepping stone to AAC organizational tool. And as you'll see on the top, we kind of have a place where you can put what activity we're doing. And tonight specifically, we'll be reviewing strategies to model during book reading. You will also find functions of communication that you can target with your AAC user. This is kind of how we kind of move to that next level is talking about functions of communication and how to target those as well as targeting those with core words. You'll find a spot for that as well. And then some scripts for aided language input and some key tips at the bottom. So this is great. You can use this as a planning tool for yourself for future for future sessions with your with your clients, you can hand it to families. Um, those of you that are teachers and parents, we encourage you to use this as well. The next handout that we have in the materials tab is kind of a reference guide for you. So it goes over what we talked about today and just as a reminder for you for future sessions and for planning, Kind of what we walked through how to walk through that form um, we'll be doing that tonight together but then when you leave it's just good to reference this to remind you of what each of those steps are and how you can come back and again you can feel free to share this with colleagues um, that weren't able to attend or your families that weren't able to attend this is a great tool and reference to use all right so as Brittany mentioned tonight we're going to talk about reading books um, and one of the reasons we wanted to cover this um, activity is that books are great for all ages. And we often will talk about, and tonight some of the examples you're going to see, is that there's always that age respectful books. Um, we can use picture books, even if our kids aren't reading at age 16, 17. Um, there's some great picture books out there that are still um, age friendly, age respectful, as well as early books and some chapter books that also have lots more pictures that sometimes can help foster our love of reading, um, even if we're not independently reading ourselves. And then on top of that, you can make homemade books, PowerPoint books, use you know Google Slides, whatever you have available to you. Um, it's another great way to um, start talking about telling stories and have your AAC learner participate in creating the story with you and then read it um, after you've made it. So just lots of options. 
we can get engaged with it. We can talk about what we're seeing. And we're really going to talk tonight about having that engagement versus testing or questioning, um, which is kind of sometimes, especially for those that are speech therapists, teachers, we're used to asking questions about the book and asking those comprehension. And we kind of want to take a step back and just be uh, enjoy the book and talk about the book. And so you'll see some of that in tonight's um, session. And at the bottom is just something to think about. Um, it's a strategy called CAR, where you comment and pause. So you're commenting about something on the page, ask maybe a prompting question to help if they haven't responded. Um, and you know, offered up anything about what you're talking about, pause again, we want to give that wait time. And then if they did respond or they haven't responded, we can respond and add to it. Um, so you're going to see that in action tonight, but it's just another way for us to get away from, you know, what's this, what's this. Okay, so the next um, two slides that I'm going to show are just an example of the low tech boards that you can download um, through the materials tab or from the PRC Saltillo websites. Um, the first one is a Unity 84 sequenced low tech board. Um, just this is great for you to use. Um, tonight we're going to specifically be going through the word power vocabulary, a word power vocabulary file. So Heather's gonna be showing us how to model using that. But you know, if you are, if you do have a client who's using Unity or Lamp Words for Life, you can use that low tech board as well. It's really for any device that that your AAC user is using. It's not, we don't want to make this device specific. That's another reason why we wanted to do this training is because these strategies and and tools can apply to any AAC user. All right, so tonight um, our video is going to be just a little bit different. Um, I did, you know, I'm going to be modeling for you um, talking about a book, and I've got two separate books, so it's a little bit longer video, um, but I wanted to see, wanted to talk about that, especially if you're working with older students or older kiddos, that finding books that maybe have a picture book or a lower um, reading level um, available. And Wonder is a great chapter book for all ages, but then there is this picture book version called We're All Wonders. And so sometimes having that as more repetition and getting engaged or prepping them for listening. Um, I use this with high schoolers in a self-contained classroom. And we were reading as a class the full book Wonder but then we could use this um, maybe for just fostering some of that language to go along with the chapter book. So we're going to play this video for you and see what words you are hearing, what um, core words from those boards you might be hearing, and maybe share them out in the chat window with us. Okay, just let me know if you can't hear it and I will turn up my speakers. Let's read a story. This is called We're All Wonders. We're All Wonders. I know I'm not an ordinary kid. Sure, I do ordinary things. I ride a bike, I eat ice cream, I play ball. Oh, he likes to ride his bike. What do you like to do? I like to ride a bike. He likes to ride a bike and eat ice cream. I like those too. I just don't look ordinary. I don't look like other kids. He looks different. How does he look? I see that he has black hair and one blue eye. My mom says I'm unique. She says I'm a wonder. My dog Daisy agrees. 
But some people don't see that I'm a wonder. All they see is how different I look. Sometimes they stare at me. They point or laugh. They even say mean things behind my back, but I can hear them. Oh, the kids are laughing and saying mean things. How would that make you feel? Hearing th mean things would make me feel bad or sad. Here's another example of wonder in a chapter book form. Part one, August, ordinary. I know I'm not an ordinary 10 year old kid, I mean, sure, I do ordinary things. I eat ice cream, I ride my bike, I play ball, I have an Xbox. Stuff like that makes me ordinary, I guess. And I feel ordinary inside, but I know ordinary kids don't make other ordinary kids run away screaming in playground. I know ordinary kids don't get stared at everywhere they go. He likes to eat ice cream and play ball. What things do you like to do? You like ice cream and Xbox. You like the same things as August. If I found a magic lamp and I could have one wish, I would wish that I had a normal face that no one ever noticed at all. I would wish that I could walk down the street without people seeing me and then doing that look away thing. Here's what I think. The only reason I'm not ordinary is that one, no one else sees me that way. But I'm kind of used to it, how I look right now. I know how to pretend I don't see the faces people make. We've all gotten pretty good at that sort of thing. Me, mom, dad, Via. Actually, I take that back. Via's not so good at it. She can get really annoyed when people do something rude. Like, for instance, one time on the playground, some older kids made some noises. I don't even know what the noises were exactly because I didn't hear them myself. But Via heard and she just started yelling at the kids. That's the way she is. I'm not that way. Via heard the kids being rude and yelled. How does it feel when someone says mean things? Hearing mean things make me feel bad. All right. All right. So that, that is just a couple of examples of reading um, and kind of taking those pauses, those comments, some prompting questions, and trying to get engaged with the book. So I see we have some core words people plopped into our chat window. I'm so excited. We did want to talk a little bit about um, language stages. And I apologize, Brittany, that slide didn't update. Um, one of the handouts that you have is a chart from our AAC Language Lab. And it is the language stages. And if you want to go to the next slide, it's also the pragmatic stages of language. So those functions that Brittany was talking about earlier, um, so that you can kind of look at it, engage. You know, if our student or our child is pressing one or two or three buttons on their device to make those phrases um, kind of shows you which stage they're at. And we can kind of start thinking about how do we keep pushing? How do we keep getting them, you know, growing our language and getting them, moving them up in stages? Um, definitely not meant to be like a prerequisite, um, but it just gives you a reference point. And so then we can also look at when we're talking about those functions of language, we want to move beyond just requesting things. And so that's where um, tonight's going to talk a little bit about some of those different functions we can do so you can refer back to these um, to help kind of get you get you moving in a different direction. So we're going to go with the flow tonight that when we're using this organization tool, you pick out your activity, which we did with reading a book. And then we're going to talk about 
those functions of communication that we could target. So when I'm thinking about reading a book, um, and when you're thinking about it, what are some of those functions you see up here that we could target? Or things that you maybe you heard me talking about if we read a book. I kind of went back and forth on it. Sometimes we do share and show, right? When we're looking at those books and try to reference. Commenting for sure, what you like, what you don't like, how you feel. Yeah, exactly. That's where I was going. And sometimes stating an opinion, like you said, with like and don't like. Relay, Relay events. events. Yeah. Good. Person. Yeah. Responding to questions. You guys got it. Yep. Totally. So you can circle one to, it, you know, it's not a like have to have list, but um, it gets you thinking about what else could I be targeting um, with these. So that's where we're at tonight. And then I'm going to look back and read off some of these core words or phrases that we could be targeting. So you guys had some great lists. Um, you heard me use not, do, eat, like, look, different, I. <laughs> I love it. Play, feel, they, see, all of those are great words to be targeting while we're reading this book. Um, so on this form or on this handout, then we would type those in under those core words um, and those phrases. Sorry, it wasn't working. The top one's over. <laughs> so I was trying to type. <laughs> it's all good. All right. It's a so night not, of flexibility. We appreciate yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's right. Just like our kids have to be flexible sometimes, and we teach them to be flexible. Thank you for being flexible with us. <laughs> okay. As, yeah. So there's lots of. Oh, thank you. Okay. Sorry about the echo. All right, the next step is going to be the part where we write um, a script for aided language input. And I apologize, it might be me calling in and Brittany's speaker, I don't know. So again, I don't thank hear you for letting echo. us know. Oh, you do hear the echo? Oh, I don't hear I it, do. so it could be mine. Yeah. Sorry about that. So the next step is going to be that script for aided language input. And this is kind of one of those things where we start out doing a lot more of it. We want it to become more automatic, but to get you going, um, writing yourself a script, what am I going to say? What am I going to touch on the device or the board? And then looking at it, practicing it. And as you get more comfortable with it, you won't necessarily need to write yourself a script, but it's a great way to get started. And so use open-ended questions or encourage um, those open communication. And with those open-ended questions, that provides those opportunities, not just yes, no's. Um, and if your AAC learner only responds with one or two word phrases, we can respond back, we can expand on it, we can recast it or reformulate it um, and add to it. So if they say good, then we can say, oh, I feel good or you feel good and show them how to add to it. All right, so on here, and this is where it's not going to type in, but we would love for you to share in the chat window some things you maybe heard me say or some questions or some comments about the book um, that we would be getting engaged with that you would script for yourself. One of the ones I can think of was, um, I, I like ice cream or he eats ice cream. How would that make you feel? Perfect, yeah. Good. And having those sentence starters he likes to ride a bike, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, and if you could even use the word don't like, you know, or words. Mm -hmm. You don't like. And if you know their preferences, sometimes it's fun to just throw those in. Just point out some the character likes something. Oh, you don't like that. Yes, no. Perfect. Yes, seeing those portraits and talk about the differences. You have blue hair, you know, blue eyes. He has green eyes. That's a great one really just talk about the commenting, what you see on the page. 
These are great, you guys. So yeah, we would write those down and then you can refer back to this. Um, and I still do this, uh, even though I feel pretty confident when I'm usually with a device, but sometimes it just feels good to have that prepped for yourself. Um, so you're not in the moment freezing up going, ah. The next step is then finding the words on your device and so, or on your board. So we would look on here and we would circle and now I'll apologize. I don't know that they're going to line up. So my apologies, Brittany. Um, that we would find our words I and feel and like and look or see. Um, and if you have a laminated board, you're able to use a dry erase marker. Um, Brittany taught me a cool trick of taking a post it note and cutting out a hole and plopping that on your board so that it's over the word and that's coming through the hole. So it just draws attention. And same thing with a device is you can add those borders um, and show those things. So I'm gonna not have audio going on in the video. So you're just gonna see me modeling. And I know we had a question last time about, we're just kind of showing what the communication partner would be modeling. And those pauses would be opportunities for your AAC learner to imitate it if they're able um, or if they're at that level but we provide that opportunity and if they don't respond then we would move um, to those next steps so if i start playing the video here with the book and i start modeling some of those things when i get to the screen And on here, we might go in and talk about, you know, he's different. So under describe, different. he's not ordinary, he's different. We can talk about he, he likes like. to ride his bike. If we wanted to, we can start adding up, you know, adding on. He likes like. eating, eating ice cream or he he likes, likes 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 to play playing you know on his bike bike so we'll just keep adding on and that's the goal at this stage is to add more to it um i i see see and i might go into groups and body parts you know see his I, eye Blue. Blue. And we might not be at those grammatically correct sentences yet, and that's okay, but we want to keep expanding. We want to keep growing our language. I'm going to read the book. I could start with, you know, my mom says I'm unique. I'm a wonder. We could talk about he's different. different. I'm going to read, pause, engage, comment, those kinds of things. So if we're going to go to our questions, but we also like to talk to you guys about, and I apologize, um, to kind of just reflect on how did this feel? Do you have questions still? Do you have some next steps you're planning? And Brittany, I'll let you read the questions. <laughs> yeah. So the first question we had, um, come in was, do you have suggestions for how to suggest this type of planning approach for a team that is not doing this? Um, most of the modeling is being left to the child's aid. And I think, I mean, I, I've run into that before. Um, where it seems to be just one main teacher in the classroom modeling. And I think how I really kind of drove it home for those teams was just talking about how important it is to teach this child the language that they've been given. So I sometimes equate it to learning another language and essentially learning an AAC device is learning another language, right? And so the only way to learn that language is if we're taught the language in the same way that we're going to be expected to speak that language. So 
talk AAC to speak AAC, essentially. So and that was, is yeah. one of my suggestions. <laughs> yeah, and I was going to just add to that that I will often kind of refer back to that idea that we talked about with you know writing a script. It's a lot of work at the beginning, um, but we want this to become automatic. And anytime we're learning a new skill, that automaticity isn't going to be there if we don't think and plan ahead. Um, and so sometimes introducing it that way, like we're not saying that this is, you know, a bad thing that we think anybody just needs this extra work. Um, but sometimes for them to take some ownership of it too. So I've had some teams where when they sat down, if they have some planning time together, um, where you can kind of just walk through this, that can be helpful too. Um, so hopefully that'll help with that. Um, I did see another question about when doing it in real time, do you erase the icons and practice using the delete? Yeah, if your kiddo is at that phase where you're starting to delete it, totally take a moment and talk through it. And um, that's another thing I think Brittany and I both agree on is um, modeling what you're thinking. Like, oh, look, look at all those words. Let's erase that out. Um, if you're not necessarily repeating the sentences, sometimes I'll leave it like you saw me do tonight. But um, that's a great question. Yeah, the next question, have you ever run into a child being more responsive when the partner is using more like full length oh. sentences to just use the device to talk with them? Amanda, I'm curious, are you asking if we just use the device or using full sentences versus speaking and using the device? Sorry for that clarification question. <laughs> yeah, and I was just going to respond to another question that came up with the pauses that they do feel awkward. And you don't have to read it without the device and with the device. Um, for our purposes, we wanted you guys to kind of see what the activity looks like and prep those um, words and then see it with the device. Um, but it, you can totally read the story over and over again, sometimes with the device, sometimes without. Um, it's great practice for both you and the learner. I think that's a great question. Yeah, so, I mean, I I don't know that she responded, but I, I um, as far as, you know, using more more sentences or not with a child, I what what my suggestion is is just using two to three words beyond what the client is currently saying and that's what i model um, verbally and then as i'm talking verbally i'm um using the device to model okay sorry um using words keep it short and then follow up verbal oh okay yeah so got it I, I would not type out the full sentence because that can be overwhelming. Um, you know, again, I, I would, my kind of rule of thumb for SLPs and families especially is just using two to three words beyond what they're saying. So if the client's at a two word level and they use two word utterances most of the time on the device, then I usually suggest four to five, maybe even six words um, but but n nowhere beyond that. Um, so not really using a full sentence, um, but rather kind of going two to three beyond. Um, yeah, they would be hearing those complete sentences. And I also equate it to if we think about when we're um, expanding on uh, a speaking child's utterances, if they say ball, we don't jump all the way to, oh, look at the big red ball bounce up high that's a huge sentence jump and so kind of the same thing when we're modeling if they're not quite yet we can show them and slowly expand and get closer to those grammatically correct sentences and you can be talking um as you notice sometimes i didn't add the s to the likes um and we want to get them comfortable and engaged with their devices and starting to form closer sentences um, and we'll get them there and that's where the reshaping recasting can come in Yeah, so hopefully that helps. I think let us know if we didn't answer your question. <laughs> yeah, 
These are great questions. They are um, really good questions. And then I, Erica did see that you had a similar question about not modeling grammatically correct sentence. And we want to, if that's where your AAC users at, if they are formulating those grammatically correct sentences um, and getting to that phase, by all means, yes. Um, but like we said, if they're right now just doing maybe eat goldfish crackers, we want to add a couple words. I want to eat goldfish crackers. I like to eat goldfish crackers. Um, and then get closer. We and really appreciate you guys joining us. Yeah, somebody asked where we can access the the, the previously recorded sessions. Um, and those, all of the ones from last year are on the Saltillo website. If you go to um, the Remind me where it is, Heather. Support yeah, education. Support and education and then recorded <laughs> webinars. <laughs> Thank you. No problem. And Under it's also something different on the website. So um yeah, so those are there's a slew of them on there, guys. If you have not attended this training before, um we did this all throughout last year. Um so definitely check those out. There's some great ones. Some of them we kind of are redoing this year, so you'll kind of see that, but we're taking it a step further. That's where we we didn't talk about functions last year. So this year we're kind of taking it a step further, talking about functions of communication, some different ways that we can model. Um, and so, and this year with the addition of adding some PRC modeling, uh, which we will be doing again next session when we're talking about photo albums <laughs> in April. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's where you can, you can access those and you are all so welcome. Thank you for joining us.